Hey there fellow gamers, it's me, Recommend First. Today we're taking a closer look at the Armachi MB339 for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I will show you how to do a cold and dark startup, as well give you my first impressions of the aircraft. So by the end of the video, you know if the uh, MB339 is worth your cash. Uh, if you find this video by any means helpful, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to this channel to not miss out on anything Microsoft Flight Simulator related. Anyway, let's dive in, shall we? Here it is, this is what we're talking about. The Aramachi MB339 by India Fox Teco for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. It's available for purchase from simmarket.com and is priced at a reasonable 24 euros or 29 dollars. Link is down below for your convenience. The airplane already went through some updates since its launch at the 18th of October, but more on that later. So right off the bat, I can tell you that I haven't experienced any issues so far. So let's head into the sim and take a closer look. While being parked in the hangar here, you can already tell that there has gone a lot of effort in creating this airplane. In terms of detail quality, you can easily compare it to the stock airplanes that come with the sim. Even when looking at the dials and the switches from outside of the cockpit and the modeling of the pilots who actually stay in place once you get flying. You'll notice that later when we get airborne. Inside of the cockpit, where you'll be spending most of your time, you'll get a sense of nostalgia. No full screen FMS displays here, but actual dials that are your closest friend when you're doing high speed maneuvering at 400 knots. Talking about the dials, I did notice some grainy like dithering when I got in the cockpit for the first time. That was just a one timer though, and I have to mention that I'm not running the sim on Ultra, so there is room for improvement there as well. Out of the box the MB339 comes with a variety of liveries so you can blend in or choose one that fits your mood. We got a factory livery. A set of Aeronauticas, which includes one of my favorites with the grey and the red accents that you saw earlier in the uh, hangar. We got one for the United Emirates uh, with a desert like camo. A more grass or bush type in the name of Armada. And one from the Royal Malaysian Air Force. But I'm really interested in what you think. Which one do you like most? Let me know in the comment section down below. So let's quickly go over my graphic settings before we launch the MB339 into Innsbruck and show you how to do a cold start. Quite literally to be honest as you might find out. The game is rendered at a resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels and basically all my settings are mostly set to high with a few exceptions. Um, let's see, uh, actually volumetric clouds I can add that up to high. Uh, but yeah, windshield effect set to medium, ambient occlusion is set to medium, depth of field is medium, motion blur is set to low, I haven't noticed much happening in that regard so might as well turn it down a little but that's it guys i gotta admit i'm still running a gtx 1660 ti but this aircraft is really fps friendly so here we are at innsbruck airport in austria quite a popular airport among other simmers as well so i uh, figured this would be a good place to start it's not mandatory but i like to start with closing off the canopy uh, and that lever is situated on the right side, so let's press that like so and wait for it to fully close. There we go. Ready, now that that is all nicely closed up, let's start with switching on the batteries and power on the generators. Alright, next up beacon light and the nav light both go on. As we turn our head to the left side, we are now going to turn off fuel shutoff and aileron servo switches. 
And next up, all the way on the left side, we turn on COM1 and COM2 radios for communication purposes. Now let me quickly get rid of this notification before we turn the engine master and JPT limiter switches on. Now the last thing that we want is that the canopy gets ripped off the cockpit mid-flight, so uh, <laughs> let's pull this lever on the left side to lock the canopy into place. There we go, nice and tight. And now, ladies and gents, we are ready to turn on our engine by pressing the engine starter button. After pressing the starter button, put the throttle from stop to idle. Now this would be a good moment to keep your eye on the top right dial, as this indicates the percentage of RPM that is built up on the engine. As soon as this hits 25%, the generators will turn on. Perfect! Now let the engine do its thing while we switch on the GPS. And you can find the GPS switch on the right side underneath the canopy switch. Awesome! You see how the generators are now halfway on the load? Let's get rid of this anti-skid warning by switching it off on the left side right next to the throttle. Like so. You're almost good to go, we just got a few more things to take care of, one being retracting the spree brake and the second by putting the flaps into takeoff position. Considering this aircraft is able to fly high altitude, we need to enable oxygen. We can do that by flicking the green switch on the bottom left side, like so. You can also monitor this right up here. Last but not least is turning on the taxi light and contact ground for taxi clearance towards the runway. So let's do that right here. Charlie, Mike, Delta, Victor, Echo, with Mike, request taxi for takeoff, touch and go. RVRS, 3 Romeo, Echo, Charlie, Mike, Delta, Victor, Echo, taxi, to and hold short of runway 26 via taxiway Alpha. Contact tower on 120 decimal, 1 when ready. Alright, let's taxi acknowledge that. Short runway 26 via taxiway Alpha, RVRS, 3 Romeo, Echo, Charlie, Mike, Delta, Victor, Echo. Let's close that. And release the parking brake. And start our taxi towards runway 26. Now the first time I taxied the MB339 I was a bit scared of that big jet engine behind me being too powerful and difficult to manage with the throttle. But I experienced none of that. Taxiing this aircraft is fairly easy and the throttle as well as the rudders are super stable and easily controllable. So uh, let's pick up some speed and head towards the runway. Boom on the brakes. <laughs> Let's hold short here and request our takeoff clearance. Guys, Innsbruck is looking beautiful today with the updated live weather on snowy terrains. 
absolutely stunning location in this valley in between these mountains all right getting uh, into the runway here do one more break to a complete stop what I like to do is the recommended takeoff by putting full throttle while still on the brakes let it reach 100% rpm release the brakes and then you're off in no time be aware though as you notice here the rpm will come back a little before it fully goes back up again i'm not too sure if it's the wind but i do notice more than not that you have to counter steer towards the left with the rudders to keep the aircraft straight for takeoff you'll see that in a second when the wheels come off the ground here all right we are flying just uh, got to raise the landing gear and put the flaps back up and we are on our way towards Zurich. What you are hearing right now is the uh, trim. It has a nice rattle to it, I like it. There is one last thing I want to switch on before I leave you for a second with some views of this beautiful aircraft in this absolute wonder of a scenery. And that is anti-icing. You really need that in these parts or high altitudes. Unfortunately though, it's not working as I would expect it to be. Maybe it's something that needs fixing or maybe I'm doing something wrong here. But either way, maybe someone down in the comments could let me know. That would be great. Alright, moving on. felt like Tom Cruise there for a second <laughs> anyway there's one last thing that I want to show you guys as we make our way towards Zurich for our final approach to the airport and that's the highly detailed manual that comes with the MB339 so uh, let's take a closer look shall we first of all it's worth noting the amount of detail that has gone in writing this manual this document is 66 pages long and will probably answer all of your questions 
Don't worry, we're not going over every single one of them, but I did want to point that out. Right off the bat, we have the change log with mentioning of the fixes for each update of the aircraft dating back to the release on the 17th of October in 2020. So this is already proof of a dedicated development team working hard to optimize your experience with the aircraft. Followed is a welcome word and a description of this military jet trainer, which you saw earlier on simmarket.com. It's a brief history and might be interesting to read up on or not, that's totally up to you. But right after that are the minimum hardware requirements, uh, which in all honesty are a bit redundant since, uh, well, you're already able to run the sim, so... But it's nice that it's in there. More importantly, if you're not familiar with add-ons and how to install them, here's a detailed guide, which basically comes down to copying the aircraft folder into your flight simulator community folder. And that's basically it. And if you don't know where this folder is, then they also explain you on how to find this folder from within the sim itself. Of course, the uh, credits and about the manual and the updates policy as well as copyrights and legal statements, of course. Scrolling down is where we get a real life glimpse of the aircraft with specifications and all its dimensions in case you're planning on steering this in tight corners. The aircraft is powered by a Rolls-Royce Viper MK632-43 <laughs> turbo jet engine and can take off and land with a mass up to 5900 kilograms or 13,000 pounds. And yes, I'm also reading this as we go. <laughs> But this is where stuff gets more interesting, I think, because now we are getting a look at the actual aircraft and explanations of the instruments and operable switches and levers and all the stuff that makes you, uh, you know, familiar with the aircraft. Next up is the front instrument panel where you can read your vertical speed, altitude, heading, basically everything you need to uh, navigate the aircraft and more like operable oxygen flow indicators, fire warning lights and of course the gun sight control panel. Below that you can read everything about the front consoles situated underneath the front instrument panel on your left and right side as shown by this graphic on the bottom of the page. Here you get a closer look at the engine throttle as well as the uh, control sticks. <laughs> and in case you are planning on building your very own jet engine, here are some blueprints. Please, please. Please don't go and build a jet engine and um, share that in the comments with me. That that would, I mean, that would be dangerous, right? Uh, anyway, let's continue. Oh, this one might be important in case you don't want to be overstressing the aircraft. Uh, engine controls and indicators. Watch these dials carefully for engine RPM in percentages, temperature, fuel flow, and oil pressure. Less interesting, the position of the fuselage tank, but then again, it might be handy to know how many uh, liters or kilograms of fuel you can take with you. And then of course, this is where you get into uh, controlling and reading the uh, fuel system, as well as the electronical systems and indicators. I'm going to skip over the uh, primary and secondary flight controls as well as the hydraulic power and aileron control system and landing gear controls. I bet you can figure that out yourself or uh, you know, ask me in the comment section down below. Last thing I want to show you guys before we start our descent and approach into the airport of Zurich is the, and bear with me on this one, the angle of attack indication during approach phase. This is where I too can learn a thing or two, as I have the tendency to do my approach on speed and feel, but this right here is the science. It shows you how to achieve and maintain the perfect light slope, so definitely going to study this myself as well. But that's after we do this landing, so let's head back in and put this bird safely on the ground. 
So here we are again, still got some ice on the canopy, which uh, definitely isn't making this any easier. Right now I got the airport on my left side, as I was instructed by the ATC to make a left approach. So basically I'm checking if I have enough room to make my 90 degree turn to align myself with the uh, runway. So let's do a final check and uh, let's do that right now. Checking speed as I go, of course. This is uh, this is where VR uh, would come in handy, as you are constantly forced to look over your shoulder to orientate yourself on the uh, runway. Definitely gonna be uh, banking right now. This is a bit hard. All right, airport is right there. I do notice though as I'm uh, making this uh, acrobatic uh, turns or banks if you will that I'm losing some uh, some speed here so already uh, losing it right there got my flaps out gear is down and uh, as you see I'm not perfectly aligned to the runway but uh, we got a pretty big runway ahead of us so I'm not too worried about that you see the aircraft is working uh, to level out as my speed is a bit too low here coming up on the runway right now easily let it uh, let it sink raise that nose up a bit and uh, there we go. So you can definitely uh, get some improvements in this uh, landing. Um, but hey, we made it. We are on the ground on uh, Zurich. Whoop. <laughs> Almost fell over there. Don't break too hard, guys. Reduce my speed and I'm gonna leave the runway and taxi to uh, to the parking area. So you probably know this procedure by now from watching my streams, but I'm going to contact Zurich Ground via ATC and ask permission to uh, taxi to the parking. And as we make our way to our general aviation parking, let's conclude this video. The uh, MB339 is a well-built aircraft which is growing in popularity for great reason. It's modeled to the finest detail, the sound design, stability on the ground as well as in the air is absolutely top-notch. It's just such a thrill to do high-speed maneuvering and experience what fighter jet pilots experience on a daily basis. I mean, this is by definition the closest you'll probably get to this experience before actually getting into one in real life. And for that reason, I can definitely recommend this Airmachi MB339 by India Fox Taco. Right now you can purchase the aircraft straight from the Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace or via simmarket.com for a very reasonable price. So, you know, why not? you absolutely will not regret it guys it's not suitable if you're still looking for your house in the sim but for punching through clouds on 300 plus knots and covering great distances without getting in an airliner i mean this is the real deal so if this video was by any means helpful be sure to leave a like and you know what this channel is all about streaming microsoft flight simulator so if you want to see the mb339 in action be sure to subscribe to not miss out on this or you know maybe fly this bad boy together one way or another i'm recommend first and i wish you happy flying